Mountains, much like earthquakes, are likely to occur at active plate boundary zones. And mountain belts represent a place where two or more plates are colliding with one another. They're being forced into one another and something has to give. Generally what happens is that one plate is thrust downward and the other plate is thrust upward to create thickened crust, which represents a mountain belt. Some of the mountains that are closest to us, the Appalachian Mountains, are actually not growing today. These are an old mountain range. They're approximately 300 million years old. In contrast, there's some other places on Earth, Taiwan, the Andes, the Himalayan range front, which are incredibly active today and are actually growing mountains currently. One of the questions that we're trying to answer is how fast are these mountains growing? How high are they eventually going to be? And then are they going to stay around for a long time or are they simply going to disappear as they erode under the effects of weathering due to rivers and climate over a long period of time? We studied Tibet and the Andes for the very simple reason that they're the two greatest expressions of topography on Earth. They both have these incredibly high plateaus and they have these beautiful slopes that lead you down to the sea level on either side of them. One of the greatest challenges we have in reconstructing the history of mountain belts is figuring out not only how they behave today, but figuring out how they've behaved in the past. Fortunately, the rock record gives us a clue. That clue is contained primarily in certain types of rocks that allow us to infer their cooling histories. That's useful information because rocks are warmer at depth than they are at the Earth's surface. And so if we can tease out the rate at which these rocks have cooled to come to the Earth's surface today, we can start to say something about their history and how fast they were brought to the surface.